to grow Zambia's economy, we need to support our very own. From mining to manufacturing, general service and all locally motivated effort in between. This means we live, eat, drink, work, play and sleep a local Zambian lifestyle. Support local products and businesses because nothing beats unity and loyalty. Zambia's glory is a shared responsibility. We need to support that which is ours. Buy local. Local is Laka. Buy Z. Buy Zambian local products and services. Social economic growth, national pride, and jobs. <laughs> May 2023, our headlines, HH says he is in talking terms with former President Edgar Lungo. The local government parliamentary accounts committee disappointed with Mukushi Council. Vice President Mutai Nalmango says no to losing owing to national disasters. In our international news, which will be a little bit later, but remember you're currently watching us live on Top Star Channel 89 DTT and 543 on DTH. We are also live on Star Times application and Facebook. Remember that later on in the news, we will be able to read the letter to the president. You too can participate by sending your letter via text to the number 0979-958392 and avoid vulgar language. To present the news in detail, my name is Tandiwe Banda Kamaso. President Haga and HNMA says he is in talking terms with, with his predecessor, Edgar Lungo, contrary to insinuations that there is bad blood. Mr. Hichilama says he has no time to harass his predecessor, Edgar Chagwalungo. He said what happened at Mr. Lungo's residence was legal and he wondered why he was blamed when police were doing their job. The head of state said he will be the first one to protect the former head of state in an event that he is being harassed by anyone. The head of state further said the former head of state should stay away from active politics because he is retired. He further said all claims suggesting that he is harassing the former first family are not true. That was purely a legal issue. Purely a legal issue. I started with myself that when I've done my time, I'll retire and go and look after goats. The goats are waiting for me. They need my attention. And I love them so much. And I think they love me. Because you can see how they multiply when we give them more time and attention. On a more serious note, it's a legal issue. You cannot be in retirement and yet you're in politics. The law does not allow that. At the beginning, Frank, we talked about restoring the rule of law, isn't it? This is part of the rule of law. So who is offending who now? HH is not offending any individual or targeting anybody. It is the law that is being offended. You cannot be in politics, yet you are retired and you are re receiving retirement benefits, which is anchored on the law that says you must retire. I hope I'm making myself clear here. Let me extend the answer to your dry but loaded question. Eh? The law is clear. When the president, former president retires, they must not stay in politics and the emoluments they get are based on the law and they are provided for in the law. Today I see a headline in one of the newspapers to say, no, HH lied. It wasn't 13 policemen, it was eight. Okay, I asked the Secretary of the Cabinet, is he? Is there? I said, please, can you deal with that? Me, I'm given information to interpret the law. The law is clear. But in this case, if there was misinformation, it's the cabinet office. Is that my problem? 
This is a cabinet office. So what we've agreed with the Secretary of the Cabinet, he will clarify today that statement. What does the law say? Meanwhile, President Hichilema has challenged the opposition political parties in the country to provide alternative policies to those of the current government. Addressing the media, President Hichilema said so far his government has delivered the best policies for the country and Zambians would not want anything different from what has been so far. He said opposition should desist from mere comments but provide tangible checks and balances to the current government. And the president said he will not have no choice but to fire all underperforming ministers. The head of state further called on the people of Zambia to help the government fight corruption in the country. He said more judges have been appointed to improve the delivery of justice in the country. And commenting on the economy, President Haga Ndechi Masai's government has secured foreign direct investment FDI pledges worth 8.3 billion United States dollars in the first quarter of this year. President Hichilema says that this is compared to the 3.2 billion United States dollars recorded in the entire 2021 and 6.9 billion United States dollars secured in the whole of 2022. He says this symbolizes that government's policy on economic di diplomacy is working and that Zambians must understand when he and other members of his cabinet travel. President Haka in the has today, 18th May 2023, held his third official media engagement since assuming office after the August 12, 2021 general elections. Addressing the media, Mr. Hichilema had a message to opposition political parties who do not support some of the policies his government is putting in place. We ask our colleagues in the opposition to provide alternatives to these policies that we have shown today. Provide viable alternatives, not insults. We follow what you say. We follow all your insults, but we choose not to answer you because we are focused on the work at hand. Tell us your alternative viable policies to our policies. That's what we used to do ourselves. We even, we even used to do alternative budgets. People forget. Tell us your alternatives. Not insults, not abuse, not falsehoods. If you tell a lie, and you are abrogating a law, you get arrested, then you say, no, the opposition are being arrested. No, it's rule of law, remember? It's rule of law. Tell us your alternatives. What is your alternative to free education? The head of state said all ministers that are proving not to work for the people of Zambia will be relieved of their duties. I think you have noticed some changes we're making. I actually said maybe not to the satisfaction of everybody, but we are also a fair leadership. When you come from depression like that, you know that the civil service itself got affected over the years in underperformance. But we have changed as many as possible. We will continue to do that. And commenting on the economy, President Hichirema says government has secured foreign direct investment pledges worth 8.3 billion US dollars in the first quarter of this year. President Hichilema said this is compared to 3.2 billion US dollars recorded in the entire 2021 and 6.9 billion US dollars secured in the whole of 2022. Further, the president expressed concern at the late high level of pilfering of medicines in Zambia's public health institutions. He has warned that decisive actions will be taken against health professionals involved in the vice. The head of state says government should not be blamed for the action that will be taken against those found wanting, saying all what government wants is to ensure there is improved service delivery in the country. We have to do a, a bit more, and I think sometimes we have to be a little bit stiffer, but you should see some changes there. It, 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 it's, <laughs> this is a build-up of a problem of a long time. You know in the previous government there were lots of issues in health, you know, expired drugs, health became a, a, a money spinner became a money laundering in our ministry. So what we haven't done is a wholesale removal of people. I know some of UPND members are complaining a lot, but we also are aware that we are responsible to the citizens. And that's why we're singling out, slowly but sure, 
but we can pick speed. I agree with you. And we should speak speed. Blessings. Mukandewe reporting. Crown TV News. Lusaka. Vice President Mutale Nalumango says it is wrong for nations to continue to record losses owing to disaster. Ms. Nalumango says many nations are at crossroads due to recurring disasters. Speaking during her address at the site event ahead of Sendai Midterm Review Framework meeting, Ms. Nalumango says disaster prevention should be a priority. She says loss and damage must be managed. Here's a report. The first ever midterm review meeting of the Sendai Framework starts this Thursday in New York City. More than 100 countries are represented at the high-level meeting seeking to deal with disaster risk reduction. Zambia's Vice President Mutali Nalmango, who is attending the meeting, has since delivered her keynote address at the risk reduction side event. We would like to see a strong linkage between disaster risk reduction and efforts to avert, minimize, and address loss and damage. There is therefore an urgent need to harmonize and enhance collaborative efforts and an integrated approach in addressing climate and disaster risks. The Vice President is concerned with the amount of loss recorded in most countries owing to disasters. We are at a crossroads as the Global League of the Nations because the climate crisis is getting out of control under our watch as we procrastinate the required action. And Ms. Nalumango shared some strides made by the Zambian government in dealing with disasters coming in the wake of climate change. We have put in place the National Disaster Risk Management Framework from 2017 to 2030 to operationalize the Sendai Framework. Disaster management laws and regulations, a National Disaster Relief Trust Fund to be used once a disaster is declared, and a disaster management policy to ensure higher focus on risk prevention. Earlier, the Vice President held bilateral meetings with the Special Representative of the Secretary General for Disaster Risk Reduction, Ms. Mami Mozetori. The United Nations Mid-Term Review of the Sendai Framework on Disaster Risk Reduction runs from 18th to 19th May 2023. Mwapekumwenda, Crown TV News, New York City. Meanwhile, Zambia has nominated Professor Chaloka Bayani as its candidate for the International Court of Justice judge. Professor Bayani was unveiled by Vice President Mutale Nalumango during a cocktail party held in New York. Ms. Nalumango describes Bayani as a powerful human rights defender and peacemaker. Here's a report. A lawyer with more than 40 years experience in international law and human rights has been unveiled as Zambia's candidate for election at the International Court of Justice, ICJ. Professor Chaloka Beani is the man to carry Zambia's flag during the November 2023 elections. And Vice President Mutalinan Mango has endorsed Professor Beani's candidacy while calling on electorates to support a man she calls a peacemaker and human rights defender. We believe that in Professor Beani, Zambia has a distinguished candidate of high international standing and repute to serve the objectives of the United Nations in solving disputes peacefully through the International Court of Justice. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Professor Beani has vast experience that cuts across geographical and thematic boundaries. Professor Bean, who is also a lecturer of law, says he has all that it takes in order for him to take up the position of a judge at the International Court of Justice. Political engagement uh, with public international law beyond academia. And I think it's this engagement 
um, that has created my awareness uh, of the importance of the dispute uh, settlement process that the ICJ, as the principal judicial organ uh, of the UN, uh, is engaged in. Professor Beani has dedicated part of his life to defending human rights, constitutional law making, and mediation of peace and security. He has also worked with various regional bodies and the United Nations in conflict resolution. Mwak Pekumwinda, Crown TV News, New York City. Thank you for that report all the way from New York City. We do take our first commercial break to join us with more news stories after this break. Good. All right. Bye. No wonder I was so excited. Your name is there? Yes, I still can't believe it. Wow. Anyway, congratulations. Me, last time I did it down. But why? Uh, you see, my life is down. I can't. Why would I be watching my TV? And that meant I have to give her my latest double door fridge. I call her. But haven't you heard of Savenda Solar? What? With Savenda Solar, you can live off the power grid or not get bothered with long hours of load shedding or power blackouts. Power lighting for your farm, house, office space, or the great outdoors with zero noise, no pollution to the environment, and absolutely no extra costs to your pocket. For orders and details on our international standard Savenda Solar products, call us on 0971-850-031. I wanted to find out, is my place still available? Savenda, save nations, develop Africa. Warm up your winter with great entertainment on Topster. Remember to get yourself a Topster DTT promotion of 199 quarter this May. Then enjoy the best series, sports, and more. Cut all the best of the Bundesliga to the end of the season this month and see who becomes the champions of the world's best league plus the climax of the first division one. That's not all. Make a date and witness the best of series on Novella e Blast and watch Two Wives in a Story of Love Affairs and triangles every day at 2040 hours and the latest of Indian series on Star Life. And don't forget to watch Zambia's on Pungwa, the game duo, every Sunday at 19 hours. Subscribe now for only 160 quacha. Topster, enjoy digital life. Welcome back. Thank you so much for staying with us. The local government parliamentary accounts committee says it is disappointed with Mukushi Town Council for giving a deaf ear to the 2020 audit grey query audit query on poor management of the dump site. A visit to the dump site by the committee was shocking that from 2020 the council has ma just managed to put signposts and pillars of, of a parameter wall. More details in this report. Local Government Parliamentary Accounts Committee was in Mkushi and its mission was to check whether Mkushi Town Council worked on the dump site following the audit query regarding poor management of the dump site in the 2020 Auditor General's report. And as you can see, I think they were doing it this morning. They look very fresh. So the query has been poor management. Where is the office? It's been done in phases. So where is phase one? Phase one is what we did. Because initially when the query came yes, out... Yes, where is phase one? Phase one is this. From where to where? The pillars which you have seen. 
and then it also included the installation of signposts. Where are they put at this end? Uh, three years down the line from 2020. And you want your committee to believe like that? So according to your budget, when are you done with this office? This offense was supposed to be done before the end of the next month. How many meters is that? Uh, it's 300 by 300. And in, uh, in a month's time, next month, yeah. it will be done. done. That's what you say. Because it's only 20,000 baht which was allocated yeah. for this project. Only. So how much is the main? The sofa lies about 18,000 baht. What is remaining? Yes. What is remaining? Now yes, two thousand to finish the three hundred. The owner, just just like what I mentioned, you said just for this, not necessarily for the entire. Yes. The other Where part. will the other two thousand go? Because you've used eighteen out of the twenty. Meaning you are not telling your committee the reality. This is where eighteen thousand can go. And after a heated talk, committee chairperson Darius Murunda who is also Siavonga parliamentarian, said he was disappointed that council has taken the matter so casual. We are very disappointed that uh, the query that the water general raised uh, concerning Mukushi dump site is not being addressed. If it's being addressed, it's casually being addressed. If you check around, you find that the grader was working yesterday. Even this morning, they came to push the, the, the garbage when they heard that we are coming. And this should not be the case. And we are saying we are not very happy because we expected our, our, our officers to do a very good job. You know, this period is coming from 2020 and you have two, three years now and nothing is happening. The dump site is on the spotlight and the committee suggested to come back on the 24th of this month to check on the progress. Joseph Siambihi Crown, TV News, Mokoshe. A 26-year-old woman of Serenje has narrated to Crown TV News how her hus his husband abandoned uh, her husband abandoned her after three months of relocating to Ndola from Serenje. Helen Chanda says it is now two weeks since her husband left with three children and struggled to get back to Serenje to meet her relatives. Crown Television Zambia interviewed Helen Chanda in Makushi as she was finding means of getting to Serenje. More in this report. Found at Mukushi District Administration premises, stranded was 26 years old Helen Chanda with her three children. A chat with her brought out a sad story. She said her husband abandoned her two weeks ago in Ndola after a three months stay from Serenja District. <laughs> Three months, yeah. So, yeah, for three months, for By and I I business. I I I I she explained how Masala police station was of help to her and also mentioned how she's been spending nights in the court with her little children. After a chat with her, 
Crown Television Zambia led Helen to Mukush Police Station to seek assistance to reach her syringe where she's got relatives. The whereabouts of her husband is unknown as police cells and mortuaries have been searched. Joseph Siambihi Crown TV News Mukoshe. A 75-year-old man of Mumbai has been left alone with no one to feed him after he divorced his wife. The wife went with their two children and has been living, he has been living alone since then. John Chikeva of Luchendo village in Mono of Chiftom of Mumbai district, a former police officer, has told Crown TV News in an interview that he last saw his children 35 years ago and he has never heard anything from them despite several efforts made through different media platforms. Mr. Chikeva says he has advanced in years and that he wishes to see his children before he dies. Meanwhile, village headman Luchendo has appealed to all wishes to help look for his children so that they can take care of him. Matthias Chewe has details in the following report. Johnny Chikeva, 75, of Luchendo village in Mono Chiefdom of Mumba district, has for the past 35 years been alone and fending for himself. At a glance, one would wonder as to where the rest of his family. However, things became like this when he divorced his wife, who later went with his two dear children into another marriage, and since then, he has never heard anything regarding his children. Mr. Chikeba, the former police officer, laments that he longs to reunite with his two children, whom he has identified as Christian and Baita Chikeba, respectively. And Alice Mwila, the elder sister, says her brother's health has deteriorated and that he requires much care. <laughs> Meanwhile, village headman Luchendo who visited Mr. Chikeba has sympathized with him, charging that he needs his children now than ever before. So, That's why I'm Crown TV News, Mumbua. Remember that you too can write up the letter to the president and WhatsApp the letter to the number 0979-958392 or send it by text but avoid vulgar language. Let's take a, look, let's take a look at what we have today in today's letter to the president. Letter to the president. Subject. Non-fulfillment of Zambia State Insurance Corporation. ZISC obligation. Dear Mr. President, kindly intervene in the matter above in which the Zambia State Insurance Corporation, a government-owned company, is failing to fulfill its obligations of paying people whose policy have exceeded their maturity. Mr. President, Zambians have lost trust in our insurance companies because of behaviors such as that of ZISC of failing to stick to terms and conditions under which their policies are contracted. Some policies like tertiary education, which matured four to five years ago, which were meant to benefit children when they enter tertiary education, have not been paid, creating inconveniences among policyholders because they have scarce money elsewhere for their children to continue with school. Sometimes, 
ZISC just effects deductions without any agreement with workers. Please help, Mr. President. ZISC is failing us. Affected citizen, ZISC contributor. We take a break. Monozygous is a term used for twins that look so alike. Well, we can say that these bulbs look the same. And they do the same job of giving out light. But they are different. This one here is an incandescent bulb, while this one is an LED bulb. Not just any LED bulb, but a Savenda LED bulb. You see, the Savenda LED bulb is made with you in mind. It uses 90% less electricity as compared to his twin brother, the incandescent bulb. Need I say that it lasts 20 times longer and lights bright like a diamond? Get the Savenda LED bulb today, which comes in different wattages and types, suitable for indoor and outdoor areas. Save a lot with Savenda LED bulbs while living on the bright side of life. Savenda Electric. See the difference. Welcome back. The Ministry of Education has indefinitely closed Kapiri Girls Technical Secondary School. This follows another report of the third fire at the same school since Sunday, 14th May 2022. Central Province Minister Credo Nanjua announced the closure of the school this afternoon on behalf of Education Minister Douglas Siakalima when he addressed the learners at the school. Speaking on behalf of the Education Minister, Mr. Nanjua said the closure of the school is to ensure that both the parents and their children are relieved from the stress the infernos had caused. Meanwhile, police have picked 10 pupils at the school suspected to be behind the, the three fire outbreaks. Sunday to today, three instances happening. If we say an electrical fault, I'm still not getting it clearly. How it started on the far north, there is a fort. Then that fort jumps now to the far south. Does that make sense? No! Even to me, it doesn't make sense. Then it goes into another dome, gets two suitcases. Nothing is making sense. They are supposed to be a hand which is doing this. Therefore, as government, through the Ministry of Education, General Education, 
which is in charge of schools and ourselves as provincial administration where the school is domiciled. We have come up with a decision that for now, all of you, you will go home so that investigations can go on well. Temporary closure. At the same time, we want you to rest a bit. I understand what you are going through. I'm told that some of you opted to sleep outside the domes. So, all that you need to President Haga and HNMA has called on parents to take a leading role in order to end drug and alcohol abuse amongst the youth. The president said parents have a responsibility to ensure that children are protected from vices that can potentially destroy their future, such as drug and alcohol abuse. And some residents of Mutendere have expressed confidence in President HNMA call to end lawlessness, adding that Mutendere is one of the compounds in Osaka with junkies terrorizing the community. Details in this report. The issue of junkies in Zambia has been a pressing issue. In fact, the latest update was on May 16, 2023, where 28 junkies within Lusaka appeared in court for the offense of idle and disorderly. In his address to the nation today, President Haka and Hichilema assured members of the public that his government will continue on the trajectory of enforcing law and order, adding that his government has no place for lawlessness. Let's work together as society's community to support our members. Every drug user has a family. They have a family they come from. They have a church they go to. They have an association sometimes they would belong to. Let's apply those platforms to help stabilize our society. I can confirm here the government is putting resources, more resources, and other efforts to improve, enhance the rehabilitation and treatment centers, including new ones. Mutendere is just among many compounds in the capital Osaka, with junkies to arising the community. Beston Chiwe is a resident of Mutendere. He says more police officers have to be deployed in the area until sanity is restored. Mm -hmm. And Michael Nyambe, another resident, says more needs to be done using the Constituency Development Fund for youths in Mutendere who end up as junkies due to drug and alcohol abuse. Each compound is supposed to have a skill center, tailoring, brick, brickwork, different of uh, skills. Now physically you find them, they are taking alcohol, stealing, prostitution, so you find the Things are not well, but the president has got the right to know about that. Other areas with the problem of junkies include Baoleni, Kalikiliki, Kaunda Square Stage 1 and 2, among others. Christine Mapani, Crown TV News, Lusaka. In other news, some motorists and pedestrians have complained about the deplorable state of Lusaka's Tokyo Way, commonly known as the Ring Road. One of the motorists, Nelson Banda, says there has been an increase in accidents due to increasing number of potholes. He says vehicles are now using the pedestrian lane to avoid potholes that are in the road, which is becoming danger to both motorists and pedestrians. And Kamala Ward 5 councillor Mainda Simata says he is making follow-ups with the Road Development Agency to see to it that the temporal patches are done on the road as it is not under CDF but central government. By Zambian standards, $23.5 million is a lot of money. And this is the money used in 2015 on the construction of the first phase of the Ring Road, which is officially known as a Tokyo Way. The road, which connects the Lusaka Multifacility Economic Zone and the Kafue Road, was constructed at a total cost of $27.6 million. 
The objective of the road was to reduce congestion in the central business district. But now, the road has suffered dilapidation. Nelson Banda, a motorist, and Charles Mwanza, a pedestrian, are complaining about the poor state of the road. And the councillor for Kamwala Ward 5, Mainda Simata, says he is still making follow ups to see to it that the road is attended to as it is a business road. Uh, unfortunately, uh, that road uh, is not covered by, um, by, by the CDF. That project should be done by um, central government through RRDA, of course. And uh, I've engaged the RRDA on several occasions to see if they can uh, come up with uh, some kind of uh, emergency works just to patch up uh, uh, several patches which are really, really uh, deplorable. But uh, we have received no feedback on the matter but otherwise uh, from from my side as a councillor i'm really concerned about the state of that road because uh, as you know it leads to Lusaka multi facility zone which and it's used by heavy duty trucks i think a way should be found to um, maintain that road and bring it into a state that is uh, more durable and safer both for motorists and pedestrians to use the tokyo road was named after the japanese capital city tokyo but certainly, the Tokyo Way is now the opposite of Tokyo in Japan. Stavis Mchimba, reporting for Crown TV News in Osaka. Residents of Karitaka Township in Somezi District have rejected the proposed multi-year tariffs by Northwestern Energy Corporation to the Energy Regulations Board. Speaking during a public hearing in Kalumbila District, Group Representative Aaron Swana says there is a general outcry from the people of Karitaka Township that the proposed hike in electricity tariffs that most residents will not be managing. Mr. Aswana has asked ERB to look into the matter. The proposed tariffs are to be implemented. And Northwestern Energy Corporation NWEC Finance Manager Limbikani Lungu explains that the multi-year tariff application to ERB will enable the corporation to build the eminent financial gap that will be created by the increase of the purchase cost of electricity from Zesco, who have increased tariffs effective from May 1st, 2022. General outcry for your the increase on which we won't manage to manage our economical issues because of the same issues. So to us, if you like, we're going to be deep problems. So we wish and ask the reputable office to look into that matter. Up to no avail today. If we can look on the vision of the ERP on the innovation part, this has inconvenienced us much. Because if we look during holidays, they close their offices. Our weekends, they close their offices as well. And you know that Kavitaka mainly is all about the miners and the, all our time is different. You know, go for 22 hours, they close, you don't have power. That's the issue. So, sir, I'm be asking that much. I propose the adjustments in the time application. We will start, first of all, by looking at uh, the residential uh, customer, which is uh, basically the, the application was made basically to mirror what the Zesco application was. So when you analyze our application, you get to find that uh, 
um, the proposed uh, lifeline tariff application by Zesco has been also adopted by Northwest End to be exactly the same and we expect to have uh, no any differences in terms of uh, the rates that will be used for our residential customers. We take a break. We welcome you to the wonderful world of Savenda Electronics. At Savenda Electronics, we pride ourselves in manufacturing high quality electricity and water meters. Boasting of the first of its kind state-of-the-art manufacturing plant in Zambia, Savenda Electronics manufactures customized smart electricity and water meters of international standards for both the local and international water and electricity utility companies. Our highly computerized factory run by qualified staff makes, calibrates, and electronically tests the smart meters to ensure only those meeting customer specifications are delivered to the market. Some of the main features which come with our meters includes notifications about low units, tempering, low battery, and many more customized features. Savenda Electronics provides on and off-site after-sales service and has favorable contract terms for water and electricity utility companies. Savenda Electronics, the real deal. Coming soon is your top 10 Zambian music video countdown on Crown TV. To submit your videos, Call or WhatsApp 0976 863661 or visit Crown TV on plot number 12, 374 slash 3, Woodlands Extension, Lusaka. Your top 10 Zambian music videos only on Crown TV. Welcome back. In our sports news, two Zambian professional golfers, Sydney Wemba and Madali Somothia, have begun the main Zanako Master Golf Tournament on a good note. Wemba scored three under par, whilst Muthia scored one under par in a round one of competitions, which has seen England's weak David top the round with seven under par scores. Wemba is confident that Zambia will win the competition this time around. And the Narco Masters Golf Tournament Committee member Ian Radman says the competition has given an opportunity to upcoming golfers and this will help improve Zambia's competitiveness in international competitions. The competition has 144 players and all are battling for 72 prize positions. The Zanako Masters Men competition has begun here at the Lusaka Golf Club. The competition has 144 participants, and among the 144 participants, 20 are Zambians, 10 are professional golfers, and 10 are amateurs. After round one of Zanako Masters Golf Competition here at the Lusaka Golf Club, two of our Zambian golfers are among top 20 finishers of the competition. The two are Sydney Wemba and Madali Somutia. Sydney Wemba is happy with his performance as he has scored three under par. For me today it was amazing because uh, I shot three under and uh, I thank God that uh, first two three was I was under pressure but I managed to um, finish my good score. I think this time it's for the Zambians. Um, I think even all the guys have prepared well for this tournament. Me also with my team have I've put in a good work and I'm looking forward to win the tournament and uh, I can see um, good goals are coming. I just have uh, to improve tomorrow. And Zanako Vice President in the Organizing Committee, Ian Ratnam, is happy with how competition has gone so far, especially with the Zambian players. As we grow, we must understand that, that uh, the growing pains will be there. Uh, we can't expect, uh, you know, somebody to suddenly come up from our junior ranks and hit the very top, um, you know, against such stiff competition. But I think that's what will make us grow properly. 
um, and knowing what we have to beat and how good we have to be. And, and I'm sure as years go by, we will have that philosophy here. Uh, we have some younger players who, who are watching their colleagues play these holes differently, uh, manage the course differently. They will learn from this experience. And, and we are very confident and given time, uh, our Zambian golfers will shine. Zanaco Masters competition has a number of sponsors, among them Chilanga Cement. For Crown TV Sports, I'm Linosi Victoria. Football Association of Zambia, FAS, in conjunction with UEFA, has officially launched a career transition workshop for ex-footballers to run from the 18th to 21st May 2023. FAS President Andrew Kamanga, in a speech read on his behalf by Acting General Secretary Eva Luengwe, says the workshop will see candidates exposed to many post-career options and opportunities. Kamanga, however, says despite all these efforts, they have made there are many more ex-footballers who have fallen into destitution after having contributed so much to the game. Kamanga has since urged the participants to fully utilize this opportunity and gain as much knowledge as possible and share. And UEFA Head of International Relations Eva Pasque says UEFA is proud of FAS for taking career transition program seriously. Currently, we have a good number of members of the ex Zambia national team players that are attending ongoing CAF B license or workshop that is going or course that is going on. Right now, as we speak, we are conducting a CAF B uh, license course right here in Lusaka. However, despite all these efforts we've made, there are many more ex, -ex footballers that have fallen into destitution after having contributed so much to the game. We are grateful to UEFA and FIPRO, FIPRO for having identified this gap in our game and taking steps to fill up. From this platform, I have no doubt that our colleagues will explore more, op more options beyond just coaching and TV punditry. It goes without saying that not all ex-footballers can become coaches. We are also interested to learn about the possible ways that we can enhance the livelihood of the, particip the livelihood and participation in our game by ex-footballers. Uh, we have heard it today that it's so much depending on the quality of the people, whether on the pitch or off the pitch, is Africa is going to do well or not. So I'm really proud that this federation took it seriously. They are implementing a lot of stuff. And you see the results, huh? Because results are not falling from the sky. Somebody must be behind. So I'm really thankful to the federation of doing the good job and invite everyone to be part of this journey that you started. So thank you very much. To end the news, a recap of our headlines. HH says he is in talking terms with former president Edgar Lungu. The local government parliamentary accounts committee disappointed with Mokushi Council. Vice President Motale Nalomango says no to losses owing to national disasters. Thank you so much for joining me on the news desk. It has been Tandi Banda Kamaso. Thank you so much for watching and God bless you.
Are you looking for a place that sells fresh, healthy vegetables and fish? Well, look no further because New Roberts Fish and Veg Limited has what you are looking for. We have a wide variety of healthy products to satisfy your taste buds and help you in your healthy journey. We have a fully stocked butchery. Farm produced vegetables. And live fish. Yes, you heard me correctly. For that guaranteed freshness. So what are you still waiting for? Call 0976. 543-822 or 0955-108-708 or 0965-691-909 or visit Chilenje which is behind Total Gas Station because at New Roberts Fish and Veg Limited we believe only fresh foods are good enough for you To grow Zambia's economy, we need to support our very own. From mining to manufacturing, general service and all locally motivated effort in between. This means we live, eat, drink, work, play and sleep a local Zambian lifestyle. Support local products and businesses because nothing beats unity and loyalty. Zambia's glory is a shared responsibility. We need to support that which is ours. Buy local. Local is laka. Buy Z. Buy Zambian local products and services. Social economic growth, national pride, and jobs.